The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, see? You'd be best to take that to heart. You never know what you might hear on this program. Gee, you might even hear me talking sports. Go figure. Holcomb? Well, of course, Holcomb. Thank you, LP. Well, I've had nothing but computer problems all evening long. I, I'll tell you about it after the big voice man tells you who I am. The Rick Gilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. Yeah, so I'm, you know, dutifully working away, typing away in the newsroom, and hitting print and hitting print and hitting. So I go over, oh, yeah, goody, here, here's all my wire stories I'm going to need. And it's a whole stack of blank paper. So I go to another computer, and it's a whole stack of blank, blank paper. And then, I, then I start weaving the rug of obscenities. That's what happens on, on the weekends when there's hardly anyone here. I start stomping around the newsroom, weaving a rug of obscenities. It just ticked me off. You know, here I am trying to get the program going. Then I come in here, and then somebody's played around with this computer in here, too, and shut things off, and damn computers. I suppose I shouldn't complain too much because, what, Thursday, I was on the computer at home and then had nothing and had to throw out my weenies and had to toss the, toss the baloney. Had to throw everything out, but all that nonsense about boiling water, stop boiling your water, Jesus, Pete. I guess it's over now anyway, but stop boiling your water, all right? I talked to a guy who, who retired from the water department. He's 30 years with the water department in the city of Cleveland. He says, Rick, I've been, I've been drinking the water all day Thursday, all day Friday. He says, what the heck's going to make the water better on Sunday? What are they gonna, he says, the only way they could fix anything is if they literally shut down Summit County, Lorain County, Cuyahoga County, drained all the lines, rechlorinated them. He says, you know how much water that would be wasting? He said, they're not going to do that. He said, there's nothing wrong with the water. He says, even if your water quit running and it's running again now and it's brown... That's rust. That's all. Just rust. I says, well, then why was the mayor all going off about a boil alert? Oh, you know, he, he says, well, because the mayor's trying to look like she's doing something about it. Can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it. And he says, and there's not, not, nothing wrong with our water. He says, it tastes fine, you know. I heard somebody call Trevisano, heard Post Rush during the week here on the big one. And they said something about their water in Maple Heights was brown and chunky. And they, they asked Mike what they should do. And Mike said, don't drink it. That was a good response. 5, 7, 8, 11, 100 in the classic 216 area code. Well, what'd you think about, uh, gee, I, know I could play you some lovely sound of, of, of Butch Davis if my computer would work. But apparently, I'll have to do that from the other room. In any event, so Butch Davis announced that it's going to be Kelly Holcomb, and I, I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, I, I, I didn't think they could go any other way but that way. I was looking at the, the stats, and I don't care how nice a guy somebody is. When it comes to the world of sports, you could be the nicest guy in the world, and if you do not perform on the playing field, well, then you don't get the start, right? And you got what, what? What were the numbers? 173 yards versus 11. Like I said, I'm not a sports guru, but I know enough about it to watch whenever, whenever Couch played. Maybe, maybe Couch is just aware of the fact that the real problem is, because Holcomb's not afraid to put the ball in the air, what the real problem is, is that the receivers need to use some soap and water before the game to wash the butter off their fingers. So maybe Couch knew that, and that's why he kept running it up the middle and keeping the ball on the ground. If, if, he, if that's the reason why he wouldn't throw the ball or just doesn't throw it very well or wouldn't take the chances that Holcomb did, well, then it cost him his starting spot, didn't it? I think that's the bottom line is it cost him the ability to start because they, they just looked at the yards and, yeah, Kelly had something picked off, I know, you know. But that, you'll have that. At least he's putting the ball in the air and doing something. Now, I look at it as a public service, if you'd like to call and vent or discuss it. I don't think I have to be a sports guru to let you speak your mind. Larry, you're on the air. Rick. Yeah. What's up? Hey, just, uh, I see up here on the big board you want to talk about the blackout. Yeah, did you get stuck down at Sokolowski's or what? Nah, you know what, I was sitting in my house and all of a sudden that was funny because I had a window fan going, you know, one of those twindow things, you know, the uh -huh. two, and, I, and I, I was sitting there and it was about 410, 409, right, whenever everybody else lost their power, and I could hear a change in pitch in the speed of the fan. All of a sudden it just, you know, instead of, it went, it was a surge, the speed of the fan went up. 
for about five seconds, and then that was that. Everything went out, and I sat there for a while, and and apparently I was thinking, you know, Thursday night, there was a possibility that I was going to be on from 10 to 1 instead of Bob Becker, except that my boss couldn't get a hold of me because all my phones are those kind. I didn't even think of that. And all my phones, yeah, they all plug into the wall. They're all cordless phones, and you, when the power goes out, I got nothing. Want to hear about this? My buddy John in Garfield Heights, his father has a generator, okay? His house is hooked up, and his, my buddy John's is. And their house is the only two ones on the street. They had lights, and I heard it was like a, a beacon, and, and like, because it was, cause it was pitch black. I know, if you've been out there, I mean, usually when the power goes out, you usually got a street light, but Rick, it was total darkness. Well, I know, I, I decided that uh, since I couldn't call my parents, I figured I'd drive out to their house and make sure everything was all right. They live out in the suburbs, and I went out there, and sure enough, they couldn't figure out how to get the garage door open. You know, you got to pull the string to unlock it from the garage door opener and then just open the door by hand, get the car out. They said, well, we don't need the car out. I said, get the car out, and that way we can close the door again. And when the power comes, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't want to have to come back and pull that lever, blah, 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 blah. So I went driving around out in North Olmstead, and it was unbelievable. You'd literally drive down the road. And see, some cities were better prepared than others. Like Westlake was prepared ever since the Y2K thing. They actually have stop signs that fold up and lock. So all they had to do was go around, unlock the padlocks on them, and open them up, and every intersection had a four-way stop because they were afraid that the computers were going to make the stoplights go out, you know, in 2000. Now, North Olmstead had stop signs that they would lay against telephone poles on the ground. So that's not quite as good of a way of doing it, I guess, but uh, some of their street lights actually worked. They had a truck sitting there hooked up to them. The only thing I really missed, I, I, air conditioning, I killed us. But I missed the TV, but I had uh, the 1100 on, and I was hoping, I says, maybe, just maybe, Rick might be on. You know, maybe it would be the best thing to have Rick Gilmore on tonight. It would be awesome. But they had the other guy on doing the sports, and he didn't talk about the Indians. All they did is talk about the blackout. Oh, I would imagine. I, mean, I, I was thinking that. I was thinking, well, in the future, I need to get a hardwired phone because that was pretty much... I mean, I, I turned on the radio. I had a little transistor radio, and then when I left the house, when I just couldn't stand it anymore, and I thought, well, gee, once it gets dark here, I'll burn up all my candles trying to keep the place lit up so I don't walk into walls. And so when I left, I turned on the radio, and an awful lot of radio stations... Now, see, the AM in my car does not work. But a lot of the FM stations were just off the air. Hey, mine don't either, buddy. <laughs> I mean, but I work in AM radio. I know. My FM works. I got a, and I got a big dollar sound system. And my radio, my caddy, it does not work. I mean, the stereo, excellent. But AM, it does not work. It's, it's real crappy. My AM will work when it's below 30 degrees. And then once the heater starts warming up the car, it gets quieter. The radio gets quieter and quieter and quieter. I wonder how many babies were con conceived that night. I thought about that, too. I heard Kim mention that or somebody mentioned it and i was thinking i don't know i mean it, it was it was pretty hot and sticky that night i know you there was no breeze at all i mean it, the power comes on the next day and then we got a nice breeze the only thing was cool is i remember going outside about one o'clock at night and the stars i mean the stars are awesome because like, there was no lights and you see you see you see downtown or whatever i can see but it was just it was eerie because it was total pitch black. Well, I went driving down Lorraine Avenue, and I thought, well, we'll see if there's anything open. And I found one bar. They had the place loaded full of candles, but the beer was getting warm. And they wanted to close down around, I don't know, 11 o'clock or something. So I just went back to my neighborhood, and there was a bar there with candles burning everywhere. But it was... Then we ended up... Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I ended up talking to my neighbors for about an hour and a half. I thought, gee, uh, when was the last time I did that? Um, I heard down... Because you... I know you... Not to say where you live, but... I heard somewhere around by your house there was a Chinese restaurant open, and I heard they're doing killer business. That I had not heard. Uh, I'll look into it. But your neighbors uh, aren't gay, are they? Yes. Oh. <laughs> now those weren't. I was talking to the other side. Oh, okay. I but I talked say. to the I talked to the gay neighbors too. I know, but just can you imagine, you know, like going to sleep at night, and all of a sudden you got intruders in your house. <laughs> I don't think that would happen, I know, Rick, Mary. I know. I know you don't swing that way, buddy. No, I mean, you know, the intruders in my... I'd be more worried about people, not my neighbors, I'd be more worried about people breaking in and ended up on the business end of a Mossberg 500 Bullpup 12. I know, I, I know. I, it was quiet over here. I mean, there, nothing happened around my house. It was nice and quiet. And it, yeah, I... Yeah, my gun stashed, you know, and somebody come around messing, I'd pump a few shots off. Well, you know, and, and, and the guy that lives in the front part of my house, he says something about he's, his guns are ready because he lived through the L.A. riots. Well, there were no riots. There was nothing. I mean, it was really quiet. The mayor said they arrested something like 19 people that night. And I was thinking, 
All right, well, how many people do you normally arrest? I mean, it sounds to me like 10 to 15 would be normal on any given night anyway. I mean, people just couldn't see to go steal things. They said average night in New York City is an average of 50 arrests. Okay, well, they've got a lot more people than we do, too. Oh, I know that. I guess there's some things going on, but I don't think we'll really ever really find out who's to blame, who's at fault. Well, you know, I don't know. They're blaming it on us on the national news. I hear all kinds. I heard it was it, uh, it was it was a plant that was in Akron that switched to Buffalo, and they should have shut us down and isolated us, and this would have never happened. First Energy said the cause is uh, far more complex than a few tripped lines in the system. They said it's tough to say that a few problems on First Energy's lines led to the outage. The head of the industry group investigating the power outage said some of First Energy's links are where the cascading outages began, but the North American Energy Reliability Council, or NERC, NERC says uh, it now acknowledges that pinpointing those lines as being the cause is speculative and premature. I thought it was interesting that they're, they're asking you to not use so much power in the upcoming weeks until they can try and get it figured out. And I thought, how many people listen to that? Like, I know. Well, he says this probably will never happen again. They says to rebuild the infrastructure of our electricity that it would cost like $75 billion. And you know what's bad about that? Hmm. They were talking to the people who were interviewing Iraqi. They were feeling sorry. They were saying, they were laughing at us. They were saying, well, maybe they can run a line to us and we'll give them some extra power. Uh, they're funny guys. I got to run. Okay, Rick. Have a good one, buddy. All right. I already do. Have you got your key yet? Did you win your key yet? Did you call up yet? Try and win your key for that 2003 Ford F-150 Super Crew Lariat. It's worth over $34,000. It's a pretty truck. I saw it. And the Cleveland Ford WTAM tailgate party truck giveaway. Just keep listening for your cue to call to win one of those 111 keys. Then on, the, on September 12th on Wilson Coleman in the morning, if that key you got starts that truck, you drive it on home, baby, and you own it. You own it, it's all yours. It's not like a lease or anything like that. It's yours to keep. If I want it, I'd sell it. But that's just me. Because I, I need the money more than I need a brand new truck. But maybe, maybe you need a brand new truck. Maybe you do things for a living that you need a truck. You know, or maybe you just give it to your wife. She'd love it. You can put the kids in there. It's a four-door. Anyway, so it's a, it's a great thing. You know, they've been selling them Ford trucks as number one selling vehicle in the world for over 21 years. So hopefully, uh, I wish you luck. That's courtesy of Clayton Ford and us. The big one, WTAM 1100. Your triple Doppler forecast from TV3 forecaster Eileen McShea. Yeah, I caught Edmund off, off guard there. He was... I want the other one. Ah, oh, I wanted that. No, not that one. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. 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 That's not it. Uh-uh. Uh, that's not bad. There it is. From forecaster Eileen McShay. Tonight's clear upper 50s. Nice sleeping weather there, lads and lassies. Take off your green pointed shoes and climb in bed with the wind ears open. Tomorrow is sunshine upper 70s. Currently 69 degrees in Cleveland. 69. If you're on the lake, lads and lassies, get off the lake. 10 to 15 knot winds, 3 to 5 foot waves, small craft advisory. Water temperature 76 degrees. Edmund, do you know why I only put 239 beans in me bean soup? Because one more would be too farty. Thank you, Eileen McShay, for the opportunity to play the Irish music throughout the evening. Yeah, so the blackout to me was just a kind of a pain. I was trying to get people to make bets with me about when the power would come back on. And I said, 5.45 a.m. The lights came on in my house at 5.40. Now, you can't get much closer than that. No one would take the bet. Maybe they figured I knew something. Now, here's what I was going to tell you, because I, uh, I don't know whether it's, it's too late to keep talking about the blackout, but consider this, and I've heard more than a few people say this to me. They said, wouldn't it be interesting that every time that President Bush goes to Crawford, Texas, something happens. There's some event that happens. They said, wouldn't it be interesting if they turned off the power on purpose just to see how people would react, how the hospitals would react, how the airlines would react, how the people would react, and they control the power, right? So if there were massive riots starting to break out in New York City, tink, 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 they just start flipping the switch, let's get them lights back on right now. But since everyone was calm, remain calm, this is only a test. Is that possible? I think it is. Because what if we had a really true, an emergency, an event? 
Uh, wouldn't we want to know how people would react? A uh, big deal. I had to throw out a pound of bologna and, and, you know, you know what really bothered me? I had to throw out a brand new bottle of Miracle Whip and a brand new bottle of mayonnaise. Did you have to do that too? And I thought, you know, I'm going to tie mayonnaise and Miracle Whip into the, to the body politic. That's the difference between the Democrats and Republicans. I'm listening to all these press the meet or meet the press and you know this this week in Washington and all these talking heads and pundits and all these Republicans blaming the Democrats for everything and the Democrats were blaming the Republicans for it's the Republicans fault that the power went out. And come on, I mean, that's the simple difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is Miracle Whip or mayonnaise. Which one did you want? Now, luckily, just a, a did. Yeah, I wonder how many people would actually call if I said, call up and tell me which you prefer, Miracle Whip or mayonnaise. There are people, I grew up on Miracle Whip. There are people that just never eat mayonnaise ever, right? Or they grew up on mayonnaise and they hate Miracle Whip. I met one guy who, believe it or not, said he grew up on Miracle Whip and now he can't eat it. He hates it. He likes mayonnaise. I said, I like them both. It depends on what you're going to do. I don't like throwing them out. There are two brand new bottles. I was dumb enough to open them up and make one sandwich each or something. And then after 12 hours, you got to throw it out. So luckily... If you, yes you, if you had to throw out your Miracle Whip or your mayonnaise, I'll give you a little tip. That's a freebie from Rick Gilmore here. Did you get that flyer in the mail from Giant Eagle? They couldn't have picked better timing. They said, Miracle Whip or Kraft Mayo, two for three dollars. So there you go. You know what I was thinking? Maybe I'll buy a couple of each. Because I'm not looking forward to that. I mean, you can go out and buy more lunch meat or get stuff out of the freezer and you want to make a sandwich. The bread's not going to go bad, right? Who cares? The bread couldn't care less what you do with it. But then you got nothing to put on your sandwich. And as far as I'm concerned, if I can't either put mayonnaise or Miracle Whip or mustard or ketchup or something on a sandwich, I ain't eating it. I've been known to just take lunch meat and just, you know, break out the ketchup or the mustard or whatever and just squirt it on it and roll it up and eat it without bread. Have you ever had that when your bread gets old and you make a sandwich and you're biting into it and all of a sudden you realize it's got fuzz on it? Oh, my God, my bread went moldy on me. Now, I'd rather deal with that than not have any Miracle Whip or mayonnaise. And to throw it out. I mean, I don't know what the times... You know, some people say stuff keeps better if it's got mayonnaise or something in it when you go to a picnic. Keeps better because they put so many preservatives in it. Well, I don't know. Jim, what do you think? May mayonnaise or Miracle Whip? Republic Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. A Republican or Democrat? Uh, I don't. I think there's more of a difference. Democrat. There's more of a difference in my, back and forth. There's more of a difference in my question between Miracle Whip or mayonnaise than there is between Republican or Democrat. <laughs> you know, at yeah. least you can taste Miracle Whip and go, yep, that's Miracle Whip. I could, I could find that one in the dark blindfolded, no problem. Now, Republican or Democrat, I don't, everybody's trying to kiss everybody's fanny to try and get all the votes. They're all wishy-washy, and, and uh, they, all they can do is bicker amongst themselves. Well, we know they're all full of uh, Miracle Whip and mayonnaise. You want to talk about the blackout? I'll put you on hold and get back to you. Can you yeah, do that? Yeah, sure. All right, hang on there, Tiger. When you hear the music, that means it's time for important words and coverage of what in the world's happening. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend, and this is Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. <laughs> Rick Gilmore. I'm the kind of guy that used to heat up, I'd take a pair of pliers and heat up a quarter and throw it to a homeless person. That's funny. Now that is funny. On News Radio WTAM 1100. The problem is they've moved up in the world. I went to the gas station tonight. And, uh,. Well, first off, I got carded. I said to the guy, you got to be kidding me. I'm 42 years old. I said, I've been in here a dozen times. I don't care if you walk outside and come back 30 seconds later. And they must have been fined a lot. They must have gotten busted a lot. I've been carding 42-year-old men to buy a 12-pack of beer. And then I walk outside, and some, some guy comes up to my car window, which doesn't work. So I have to open the door. Can I help you, sir? And it's never good when they do that. It's never good. And he says, can you help me? I'm trying to, none of the phones work. The, nobody's answering the phone, and I need to get back to 240, East 247th in Euclid. And I go, I'm, I'm going to work. I mean, I thought he wanted a ride or something. I says, what do you want? And he says, uh, could, you, could you spare two or three dollars? So now it's up to two or three dollars. Well, two or three dollars ain't going to get you a cab ride, but it might get you a six-pack of Old Dutch or some cruddy beer. That's what he was doing, right? I'm going to go get a couple of 40s and sit on the curb and drink them. 
I know what's going on with these people, trying to pull one over on me. Here, I was trying to talk about Kelly Holcomb, and nobody cares less. I mentioned I had to throw out Miracle Whip and Mayonnaise. All the lines light up with Miracle Whip and Mayonnaise. Which one do you prefer? I guess it's a, I'm putting my vote in Miracle Whip, but uh, that's two to none. But uh, No, I take that back. Rick from Pennsylvania called off air and said a vote for Mayo. I, had to th I have both of them. I like to keep both of them because, you know, it depends on what you put it on. Right, Jim? That's right. Yeah, I mean, BLT's got to have Miracle Whip. Uh, no, I disagree. I like mayonnaise on Miracle Whip. You like I mean, mayonnaise on BLT's <laughs> you, uh, you put mayonnaise tuna fish Miracle Whip. Uh, tuna fish Miracle Whip, yeah, because uh, it kind of cuts that tuna flavor. Got its own yeah. kind of flavor, but you know, I don't even know why I buy mayonnaise, because I don't know what I put it on. It's just once in a while, I just stick a spoon in there and dip out a whole big spoon of it and eat it. I don't know why. <laughs> what about roast beef? Uh, with, uh, horseradish and mayonnaise. Well, now, if you're going to make a nice horseradish sauce, I suppose you'd use mayonnaise, wouldn't yeah, you? That's right. You want to use Miracle Whip. You know, I, I like to make uh, roast beef sandwiches and put butter on them. Uh, put butter and salt and pepper. That's it. Nah, I never had them like that. Try it sometime. I, didn't, I thought it sounded terrible, too, but I always had them that way when I was a kid. We'd have leftover roast beef from Sunday dinner, and, and my mom would always make them with butter. I don't know. I thought, well, let's... Ugh. Here's one for you. How about peanut butter and uh, Miracle Whip? I've heard of people eating stuff like that, and uh, I've never tried it. I'm not going to knock it, like like Mom always bacon. said. Yeah, I'm throw bacon at it. Yeah, too. I've heard about bacon, peanut butter, and Miracle Whip sandwiches. What a pickle. <laughs> what a pickle. I mean, that sounds like an Elvis special. Why don't you just watch your heart clog, you know? Did you put any more fat on there, please? How about a lard sandwich with Miracle Whip and butter? You know, they used to eat lard sandwiches in the old days, but people used to work a lot harder than too. Yeah, right. You don't lay on the couch. Yeah, everybody sits in front of a computer screen all day now, you know? We're, right. we're all getting lazy. Uh -huh. So anyway, you, well, you, right. you had something to say about the blackout there. Well, yeah, it uh, just shows you how dependent we are on electricity. I mean, we're out of power eight hours. And people are panicking, lining up at stores and... I thought it was ridiculous. When I went to North Olmstead, I drove around pitch black, and I thought, well, I'm almost out of gas. And, uh, that, yeah, that probably would have put a wrench in me trying to come to work, too, because, I mean, I had barely enough mm -hmm. gas to try and go out to the turnpike to try and get gas. And did you notice about the gas prices lately? That since the blackout, they really haven't gone down. They've been going up. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, well, I got to North Ridge. The gouges. I know. I got to North Ridgeville, and all of a sudden their lights are all on. Then everybody's lined up three deep in the gas stations, and the ice is all sold out. And, and I mean, I, by, by the time I thought about, okay, well, this blackout may last a while, by then all the ice is already gone. What do people do, panic and like an hour into it? They go and buy all the right. ice? <laughs> I mean, I know a buddy of mine said he bought, uh, Norm Ezzy says he bought 80 bags of ice. <laughs> he says, well, you know, to his neighbor, can I keep this in your garage? You know, you'll thank me when this thing goes on for... I mean, they talked about a possibility. That's what freaked me out when they were saying, well, if we have to switch over the grid, it might take four or five days. I was thinking, four or five days? Right. I mean, I, I didn't care less. I'm taking a shower. I don't care what's coming out of that faucet. I smelled worse than whatever the water could have been. Well, maybe somebody who's out there could tell us how old this system is and why, you know, why there's problems like this. We shouldn't have problems like that, should we? Well, you know, it wasn't even that hot. Right. I mean, it wasn't like it was in the 90s all over the eastern seaboard. It wasn't that hot. Somebody, well, I... anything, anything like this is going to break. You know, your car breaks, everything breaks, right? Well, you're right. Sooner or later. So how, how old is the system? Well, they said some of the components are up to 50 years old, and some yeah. of the stuff is as new as new as 15 to 20 years old. Yeah. Well, we've got an awful lot of... I mean, you think back 15 to 20 years ago, not everybody had a home computer. Right. I mean, there's a lot of electricity. I mean, I know people that live in my neighborhood that don't have a lot of money, but they've got two air conditioners going in their windows at all times. Color TVs. <laughs> yeah, well, everybody's got a TV. I missed TV during that, except it was nice to actually have conversation with people. But, see, I went to this one bar in North Homestead, and apparently the people that were in there had been in there. Now, I walk in at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Now, yeah. stone cold sober, right? And I come into this, Jesus, these people have been drinking since 4 in the afternoon when the power went out. Well, hell, heck, the beer's going to get warm. Well, I know, but they're driving me nuts. They're screaming and yelling. and uh, You know what I mean? They get drunk, and every good time's too much of a good time. You know, yeah. they have to prove that they're getting their money's worth out of their beer. Yeah, any reason to have a beer, I guess. No, well, I, I'm not going to... get warm now. No power. Yeah, and I was getting charged full price for warm beer, and I thought I can go home and drink warm beer if I want to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, that was... That, the refrigeration part bothered me because I was thinking, thank God I don't have like, one of those freezers in your basement full of, full of steaks. What do you do then? Um, have a cookout. Don't open it? 
<laughs> yeah, don't open the door. See if the lights on. Ever have a cookout? I mean, I woke up the next day and made myself a bologna sandwich, didn't, not even thinking that the bologna was like clammy. And I ate it, and I thought, if I get crampy or I get the runs there, it ain't worth a dollar's worth of bologna. So I threw it out. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, I didn't even think about it. I was just like, but I picked up the hot dogs. You know how when hot dogs get old, the sauce and you know the juice gets like milky covered. Uh, well, these were these were like two days old and it was already milky and I thought, nah, those are going. Yeah. They're, they're out of here. So yeah, I never noticed that. All right, Jim. Well, thanks for checking in. All right. See All right. You yeah. Talk to you later. Dave, you're on the air. Yeah, this is Dave from Lorraine. Mm-hmm. Um, is how were they able to come right out and say it was not a terrorist act? But I mean, we're three days later and they still have no idea where it happened. Well, I know. That was interesting. I don't know. Good question. And they came out right away and said it's not a terrorist act. And I didn't think it was a terrorist act. I mean, after 10 hours of it, I thought, come on, I'm getting, I'm getting sick of this already. You know, let's get this thing over with. Toll for you're on the air. Hi, Rick. I'm Dick from Dayton. How the hell are you? Oh, good. I just wanted to check in with you. And, you know, you have a good subject tonight. Miracle Whip or Mayo? No, I want to go on the other one. You're going to go on mail? No, I oh. want to go on the sports question you had. Oh, you mean about, uh, is it a good idea that the Browns are going to start Kelly Why? Holcomb? Hey, Rick, I want to ask you, you know, yeah. Counts was our, we drafted him in 99, you know? Right, yeah. Why do you think they made that? You know, I've got a lot, he's, he's won a, a lot of games, is it because of his poor, poor performance, you think? I got the tail end, you know, I listened to Jim and Casey and Doug, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I just... I don't know. Do you think it's a good decision? Well, I don't know. I always said, and I've said this for a long time, that I thought that Tim Couch was kind of like Bernie Kosar, you know, that kind of gangly kind of thing, except that Kosar could get the job done, and Couch didn't seem to be able to. I mean, Kosar at least tried to, he'd throw the ball, I mean, Couch barely ever throws the damn ball. Yeah, I mean, everything, everything's up the middle, up the middle, up the middle. Well, any team that watches him, you know, yeah. they're going to go, we know what he's going to do next game. Yeah. They don't know what Holcomb's going to do. They haven't seen him play on a regular basis. No, they have. Hey, Rick, I wanted to invite you and some of the crew down there, you know, down here to BW3s uh, and watch the game sometime here in Dayton. Well, if I ever get near Dayton, I'll take you up on it. Okay, well, nice to talk to you. You too. Thanks for checking in. I don't get down to Dayton very often. Just doesn't seem like a place I go. I go to Columbus. And uh, No good board up, Ed. Have you met Dick from Dayton? Oh, you're just curious. I mean, I thought maybe you'd met him. I thought maybe he was up here or something. Well, I, you know, what do you got to do? Uh, what the hell is there supposed to be? What is there to do in, in, in BW3? I mean, uh, and why doesn't he come up here? There's probably a lot more to do in Cleveland than there is to do in, in Dayton. I mean, you know, Miracle Whip or Mayo? Cleveland or Dayton? I think if you had Cleveland or Dayton, you'd say Cleveland. I mean, I see those commercials for the news on TV. This town never sleeps. What the hell Cleveland is that guy living in? What, what the hell's going on? There's nobody on the road at 3 in the morning but cops and criminals in Cleveland. There ain't nothing going on. I, I, I might be on the road because I'm going home from work or something goofy. You know, people are going to and from work all kinds of weird hours. Or if I was filling in for Wills, I'd be on the road at 3 in the morning. But you know, the, the sidewalks pretty much roll up, right? As soon as the bars close, well, what else is there to do? Even the Hot Dog Inn's been closing down. That used to be open 24-7, 365. You could go there on Christmas and get hot dogs. Now it's too slow and there's nothing going on, so they just closed down. Whatever happened to the big egg? You used to be able to go get some sloppy eggs after the bar closed. Can't do that no more. Where can you go in Cleveland after hours besides a Denny's? Where could you go downtown to get something to eat? Mardi Gras? Over by the plane dealer building? I think they're up until 4 or something serving food. There's not a lot of places to go and things to do in Cleveland as far as I'm concerned. Michael, you're on the air. Yes. Yes, sir. Hey, I got a comment about the mail and the... Miracle Whip, yeah. Miracle Whip. Yeah. First thing is you made a comment about the conspiracy theory regarding Bush. Oh, you mean, did they, did, could they have shut the power down on purpose just to see how we'd do? Right. Yeah, well, that's possible. Well, I think that you said the store sent out flyers for Miracle Whip, two for three dollars. Yeah. So maybe they shut the power down. And then send the flyers out. So, so maybe, maybe the grocery store is behind it so they can move out all their extra Miracle Whip and Mayo and bologna. They're pointing to Cleveland, and the ad was in Cleveland, and your Miracle Whip went bad. <laughs> yeah. So that sounds like a conspiracy to me, Michael. <laughs> I think you're right. Hey, I got a comment about the Holcomb 
uh, quarterback ordeal there. Yes, sir. You know, I, I think that they're making the right choice. Uh, the city and, and a lot of Cleveland Browns fans are getting kind of frustrated with Couch. You know, they're, they're getting hungry and they don't feel like he's doing the job. I think it's a win-win situation for the Browns because Holcomb goes out there. You know, they're ready. The fans are ready for something fresh, something new. Somebody's throwing the ball. If he doesn't do well. They can run back to Couch. The fans will be ready for that. If, if Holcomb be doing well, they'll be ready for a change, and then they'll be right back behind Couch again. So, I, you know, if they put Couch in there right away, the fans are just going to be booning the first mistake, and, you know, then they're going to be looking down, and Butch Davis is going to look bad. But in, in this instance, I think, you know, it's a win-win situation. Holcomb was out there and wins games, everybody's happy. Yeah, he I, doesn't. Yep. He just pulled and put Couch in. Yep, yep. As long as, long as we got them both, the only problem is, is didn't Couch make the comment that he said, if I'm not going to start here, I'm going to start somewhere. So that Absolutely. means that he'd like to go if he's not going to sure. start. And I think, I think any competitive quarterback would say the same thing, but he ain't going anywhere this year. Well, yeah. I just thought, like you said, even if it was just a marketing ploy to try and get people to, to show up and, and, and you know just get people in the seats and say, well, we want to sure. see how Holcomb's going to do. I mean, right. and, if, and if they win, everybody's happy. And then we've got to try a test boo sometime when Holcomb screws up to see if he'll cry. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. There's no crying. So. There's no crying in football. Uh, well, there is now. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, well, people are crying in their beers. I don't but... think that's the image that uh, the Browns wanted. You know, we got the quarterback to cry. Yeah, well, well. Well, we'll see how Holcomb does. Like you said, we got nothing to lose. That's right. All right, thanks for calling. Mike trevisano has got that phrase that pays weekday afternoons. You know what that is, don't you? You listen to Mike's phrase that pays, and then you, when Bill Wills asks for the phrase that pays on Wills and Coleman in the morning, you could win tickets to the Blossom Festival Band, salute to John Williams, and to the Sunoco World Nationals at Norwalk. And you know what? I've got some pairs of passes to give away to exactly that, the Sunoco World Nationals at Norwalk Raceway Park. These are for uh, Sunday the 24th. So be the 11th and 12th caller right now on the contest line at 578-1111 in the classic 216 area code. Give away a couple of four-packs. I've actually got six of these to give away throughout the evening, so keep it tuned right here to Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. Your triple Doppler forecast from TV3 forecaster Eileen McShay. Tonight, clear, upper 50s. Tomorrow, sunny, upper 70s. Currently, 69 degrees in Cleveland. 69. How about that? supposed to go down into about 57 tonight. Should be good sleeping weather and then the humidity will go away because we had humidity galore, right? Even if it was only 79, they said it was something like 78% humidity or something. Why don't you just breathe Miracle Whip? Yeah, Miracle Whip or mayonnaise. I keep forgetting to ask people when they're calling. I should be writing this down. It's important. Everybody had to throw stuff out. Did you have to throw out a lot of stuff? I, I, I don't have a lot of stuff on purpose, just in case. Uh, what did I keep that I shouldn't have kept? I got rid of the, there's coleslaw dressing to make coleslaw. I figured that's like mayonnaise, right? So I threw it out. I threw out my kimchi. I don't think you have to throw out kimchi. I don't think it goes bad. But uh, once it's been cold, I, thought, I, don't, I don't drink milk. I drank the water, just like the guy from the water department said. He said, there's nothing wrong with the water, Rick. Well, I had bottled water. I bought some. But I thought, I'll give it to the dog. You know what? Just and before I found out if the water was okay... And I hate to buy bottled water for my dog. I should have just boiled some on the because I had a gas stove, luckily, so that, that worked fine. But since I had already bought some bottled water for me, and then I thought, you know, if I get dysentery, I can find the toilet. If the dog gets dysentery, the world is its toilet. My living room is its toilet. And the dog never makes accidents in the house, but if it got sick, it's got no choice, right? I had a great cartoon once of a dog with its legs flying and its legs flying and the owner's looking at it and the dog's standing by the door and the owner goes, you have to split? You have to sit? <laughs> you have... <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> so yeah, if the, uh, if the dog got sick, there'd be big problems. So my pooch got pampered with bottled water and then I found out that if the water's fine for me, then the water's fine for everybody and... I believe people that work for the water department, and if they tell me the water's fine, then the water is just fine. How about that? Adam, you're on the air. Yeah, I just want to talk to you about my experience with the blackout. Yeah. Um, I think it went out around 5.30. I live in Chardon, and they said it was countywide, and then we found out it was the eastern seaboard. Right. And Mayfield and Sun Center Road BPU station was packed. 
And I used my Star Wars lightsaber for light because my flashlight burned out. <laughs> So you had a Star Wars lightsaber, you were playing Darth Vader on a dark yep. night. Okay. And I think I know what happened. Mm, uh, yeah. The UFOs did it this time. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Yep. East of the Cuyahoga, you were on the air. The UFOs did it. Uh, I, I don't know as if I necessarily believe in UFOs. That's funny, when I asked the question one night, I said, Do you, uh, do you believe in uh, God? And there was this guy on the line, and he says, eh, I don't know, prove it to me. I said, do you believe in UFOs? Absolutely. So, <laughs> the existence of God was up for grabs there, but UFOs, without a shadow of a doubt, this guy just knew, UFOs exist. Jim. Yes, uh, hey, I'd like to make a suggestion on the Browns. Yeah. I would like to see, uh, I'm a season ticket holder, and I would like to see them, since they boo uh, Tim all the time down here, use, use uh, Kelly Holcomb on the home games and use Tim Couch on the away games because we have two of the best quarterbacks in football. Can I, uh, in Debbie? Hello, what the heck was that? Uh, did, did you, yes, Edmund, does he do that often? Does this guy call other shows with his little buzzer? Oh, you buzzed him. Oh, I thought he buzzed me. Well, I hung up on him. I thought he was going to sit there and make buzzing noises. Well, yeah, what? Here's what I was thinking. Have you seen Butch Davis lately? That boy don't look like he's missed many meals. He don't tuck his shirt in no more. When they start not tucking the shirt in... <laughs> Well, I mean, I can imagine if you were Butch Davis, you'd probably go to any restaurant in town. And people would love to feed you, right? I mean, you know, if I had a restaurant and Butch Davis came in, I'd feed him. I wouldn't charge him nothing. I'd say, come on in. Let's talk, let's talk about what's going on with the Browns or whatever. I mean, that's the reason why the Indians retired number 21, you know, because Hargrove couldn't fit in the jersey anymore. That's the problem. People really pack on some pounds. Pat, you're on the air. Hey, Gilly, how are you? Great. Wonderful show. Oh, well, as usual. Uh, of course. Right. Uh, Miracle Whip, never mayonnaise. Never mayonnaise? Never. Okay. Never. Uh, I also put butter on my roast beef sandwiches. I thought I was the only one in the world that did that. Butter and salt and pepper. It's out of this world. Yep, and that's all it needs because you can taste the roast beef still that way. That's what's important. Yeah, because if you put if you put Miracle Whip on a roast beef sandwich, you may as well be eating ham or bologna. What's the difference? That's right. You that, can't taste it anymore. Yeah, that's that's nice, subtle roast, roast beef flavor. Right, yeah. right. Okay, the third thing is the uh, quarterback controversy. I think one is probably as capable as the other, but I think Based on what I saw in preseason with our lack of defense, I don't think it's going to make much difference who starts. Well, you're, yeah, you may have a good point there. And uh, the last thing, and I'm going to hang up after I ask you this question because I want to listen to your answer. My husband said you would be the only one in the world that could answer this. You remember the power out, the blackout? Yes. Boil your water, right? Well, that's what they said. How? I'll hang up and listen to your answer. All right, I'll tell you very simply how. Two very simple re ways to do it. Now, unless I have the... You see, you know how you have a gas stove and you have to plug it in for the igniter? See, if you have an older gas stove, that's how you do it. Now, I understand there are newer gas stoves that if the power goes out, the, the... See, mine, it's only the oven that's fired with an igniter. The burner's on top. My stove's probably 20 years old, but the burner's on top. Those, those come on right away. Now, the newer ones, you can't even sit there and, 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 I guess, override it and light it with a match or something that's got some spark in there that has to have electricity or you're not getting gas out or the, whatever. Or the other way is, do you have a gas grill that you roll around in your backyard? Fire up the propane grill and put up it or even if the power wasn't out. Because they, ju they just can't, they just you know, it won't, it won't boil enough water. So that's what I would do. I mean, I'll, I... Just, I, that's the first thing I checked when the power went out. I wanted to make sure my gas stove still worked. AJ. Hey, what's happening? Hey, how you been? I'm doing great. Hey, I got a car question for you. Okie doke. I was filling up my little teeny weeny Honda Civic uh, this morning, and I noticed that Speedway in Avon Lake, the brand new one they just built, they have racing fuel. Uh-huh. And it's three ninety nine a gallon. Yes. So it's, a, it's 100 octane. Right. And you know I got that old Chrysler, so... Could I, could I put that in the Chrysler? Is that going to hurt it? Or? Well, first off, uh, if you've got a 60, what, 65 Chrysler? Yeah. It's a 383 or a 440? It's kind of a mix. It's a 383 with 
you know, 440 heads and exhaust manifolds and all that good stuff on it. Was it originally a two-barrel or a four-barrel engine? It was originally a two-barrel. You don't need it, then, because the compression's only about eight and a half to one, and it's not high enough. See, some people, if you have, you know, if you had, say, an SS396 Chevelle with 10 to one compression, yeah, you got to have either octane booster to put in, which is, I think, cheaper than putting in high-octane racing fuel. But well, it's, it's been balanced and blueprinted, so it's all been rebuilt, the whole engine, so it, 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 it does have a higher compression now. I'll tell you what, you either want to hold or I'll answer it, answer it after the news. I'll hold. Okay, hang on there. Because it involves a lot of variables. But I will tell you what those variables are. And it's very simple, very simple task, very simple. Help you out with anything. Miracle Whip, mayonnaise, couch, Holcomb, racing fuel, or regular. I cover it all. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend. Stay tuned to these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio. WTAM 1100, 100, 100. Gosh, it's heavy tonight. It's heavy. Talking about the blackout still. Had to throw out my Miracle Whip. Had to throw out my mayonnaise. Which is it? Miracle Whip or mayonnaise? It's like Republicans or Democrats, I suppose. They come in handy once in a while. Miracle Whip's leading mayonnaise three to one. Yeah, the blackout. Uh, I talked a little about uh, Kelly Holcomb being the starter for the Browns. I think that's a good idea. Why not? Change is always good. I guess not if you're Tim Couch. He's probably sitting at home listening to me. I just hope he's not crying. But we have them both, at least temporarily, right? We've got them both for a while. Yes, good board op-ed? So he just cut you off, Dan. Oh, well, I don't think Tim Couch was going to put... He wasn't going to put me in as well. <laughs> no, you were saying he was probably at home listening. Oh, you mean he turned off the radio. He just cut off the radio, Dan. <laughs> okay, maybe. Yeah, because I got a nice letter from Sharon Hargrove when Mike left. Because I talked nice about Mike on the radio, and she said that uh, my program was the first program that they listened to because they were afraid that people were going to be bad-mouthing Mike. And that I talked nice about Mike the man, not Mike the manager. And I miss Sharon Hargrove, don't you? I mean, she was involved in all kinds of things in the community and that sort of thing. And so I got a nice letter on Orioles uh, letterhead. And so one of these days, I'm going to stop up to Baltimore and maybe watch a game. And maybe I'll get to sit in them fancy pants seats, you know, where the players' wives sit. That'd be nice, right next to the dugout down there. I mean, you know, all I'd have to prove is bring my letter with me, show it to somebody, and say, I need to get a hold of Mike and Sharon Hargrove. I mean, it's Baltimore, for God's sake. It's not like it's New York City. I mean, I think I could probably get a hold of them somehow. I, I held AJ through, let me give the phone number, 578-1100 in the classic 216 area code, or toll-free, 888 wtam you had a car question. You said you, you saw racing fuel out at a speedway, and you've got an old Chrysler. You wanted to know whether you should spend the three dollars a gallon. Right. Uh, I've got an old car with ten and a half to one compression, and uh, uh, I put I just put regular old high test in it, and it seems to be all right. Now, if you're I mean, if you've got really super high compression in your car, and, and you are racing it, well, maybe you see fit to do that. But what what they what you'll experience is you'd know if you need it if you ever have pre ignition or pinging or detonation. It sounds like throwing a bunch of tin cans down a hallway. Well, I don't want to. I want to put it in there, you know, to do it every day. I just want to, you know, maybe put it in there to see what it would change the performance or, or something like that. Or maybe mix it. You know, maybe put three gallons of that in and then put throw it up the rest with high test or something. Well, when, what do you put in normally? Just high test? Um, yeah, I put high test in normally. Okay, and do you get any pinging? Did you have to retard the timing to try and make the engine, you know, quiet down a little bit there? No, nothing like that. So you probably don't need it. I mean, I'm just thinking, see, the, the, the octane of the fuel is not going to boost the performance of the vehicle if it doesn't need it. Right, it's, it's a ping factor, more or less. Yeah, it's, it's to get rid of ping. If you've got super high compression, you might need something like that. I suggest to people, I mean, you get more performance with higher compression. If, it, if it's going to become just unbearable to put that $3 a gallon stuff in, maybe the next time you rebuild the engine, try going with, you know, 9 to 1 compression or something. I know it's going to cut horsepower a little bit, but... Uh, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm going to lock you in. I've got a master tech for an oil company here that has something I think he might have to say to you. All right? Don't, don't, don't let me go yet, though. I was going to ask you. Uh... Well, I'm going to lock you in. Hold on, all right? Oh, okay. All right. I got you there. And Chris, you're on the air. Okay. Here, I'll show you how the, I'll tell you how, how the gamut works. I'll jam it in a nutshell quick for you. Yeah, talk to AJ. What? Say hi to AJ. How are you doing, AJ? Okay, you doing? AJ. Um, I'm a master tech, and I'll tell you how it works. The more higher octane fuel you use, Technically, the less power the fuel can produce because it has one thing, less British thermal units, which is a heat source which creates power. The higher compression, the squeeze of, this, of the air and fuel mixture in the cylinder, the c combustion 
is where you're going to make her more po make her more power. Now you have to be able to make that more power without having pre-ignition and detonation. And that's why the higher octane fuel in racing applications work better because they suppress the detonation and the true flame fronts that occur in an engine which causes pinging and knocking. Now that's basically in a nutshell. But technically okay. on the, on the I understand science, that. Yeah, in the science standpoint though, people always think that, oh, uh, 100 octane, it makes more power. Technically it doesn't make more power. You have to have the mechanics to make the power and then you add the fuel in. Yeah, I think, I think I pretty much said that. Yeah, it's, it's all about um, British thermal units and fuel. But the, but the, the myth of the, the public, they, I always sort of crack up when I see them. I'm giving my uh, car a tank load of 94 or whatever, and they think they're going to make more power with that 94. All it is is so they can technically, they can make some more power if the timing is kept up on the motor. So the, the computer system, uh, the ECM, electronic control module, does not retard back the timing. It keeps the timing up. Because when the PCM sees detonation, it retards the timing and you lose performance. Oh, now you're you know? talking about a car with a computer, though. I mean, I'm talking about a 65 Chrysler. I mean, the, the timing ain't going nowhere unless you no, move it. You'll just, you'll just pay and uh, you, what, what the bad thing is about a 65 Chrysler, there is nothing to protect it. If you ping, you get damaged. Well, you know what's interesting, and they used to sell these, and I don't know whatever happened to them, but they had water injection units. Oh, yeah, they have alcohol injection now. They're, they're highly still around in racing applications. Um, alcohol is used to burn, uh, it burns cooler, and they use them uh, in racing applications. But the alcohol is designed to burn cool. It's a, it's a cool burning fuel. Now they use alcohol water mix and some alcohol and stuff. But water injection, I mean, that was so popular back then, and it still is today, but you've got to find the application where they inject it in. Right, you know, you, you right. You almost trip in, you know? Right, right. Thanks, Chris. And, uh... He was getting pretty. He was getting pretty technical on me, but yeah, he was getting technical. You know, the water injection. All it basically was was when people drive a car like that, they're not driving it around in the winter, right? They're putting it in the garage. So when the weather's nice and warm, you have a you have a jar of water, and when you nail your car, it would spray. It would have a little a, a little hose that actually went from the water injection unit right into the top of the air cleaner, so that when you nail the car, you know, and, you, and it would spray water in there to cool the fuel, and then it would try and help with detonation. I've seen. Old Ford 390s and old Lincolns with 462s, and you get these old people that drove them, and they never put their foot in it, and they got full of carbon. That was another problem. They would carbon up on top of the pistons. Sometimes so badly you'd have to take the heads off and literally chip and scrape the carbon off the top of the pistons, and the problem with the carbon is you get that carbon buildup, and it gets hotter, you know what I mean? It gets real red hot, and so when the fuel goes in, it's pre-igniting because yeah. it's it's hitting that hot carbon on there before it's supposed to be compressed and ignited. So you're uh, getting... we see we see that with people that change their oil. Yeah, well, it was real common with, like I said, old like Lincolns with 462s in them back in the 60s and stuff because you'd hear them things and it, it didn't matter what you did to them. You could retard the, you know, sometimes they'd get so bad you could retard the timing. You you could put water injection. You could put the highest octane fuel in, and they're still gonna ping because they're just loaded full of carbon. Hey, speaking about old Lincolns, I went to the car show that you guys had at the Fireman's Car Show up in North Olmstead. Yeah. It was a black 62 or 63 Lincoln Continental, and boy, was that thing beautiful. My wife saw that, and she says, I want this car. I said, well, I got my Chrysler. She said, well, okay, let's sell it. We, well, I want that Lincoln. That was the one that was 4750 they wanted for it? Yeah, yeah. That was, you know, what's funny is... You start looking at an old car like that, that they're, they're slab-sided, those old Lincolns, and I mean, if that thing had any body work in it, somebody was really a pro, because that thing was, was black and was just as straight as an arrow down the sides. The only thing that car needed was some upholstery work. Yep, that, that car was immaculate. That's the only car I ever looked at and I considered selling my Chrysler for, but, but uh, that car's got to be long gone by now. Um, I don't know. You know, what's funny is there were an awful lot of cars at car shows over the summer that had signs in them for sale because there's a lot of people that are hurting for dough, and there's not a lot of people with deep pockets that are pulling it out to buy a 63 Lincoln. Well, I, if, I just had a baby, so I can't afford it. Tr tr <laughs> trust me, I looked at that car, and I thought, if I had the money, I'd buy it. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 I don't know. I'd have to look in my old car price guide to see what they're worth, but I thought that seemed like a reasonable price to me as long as it ran properly. Oh, it was very, it was very reasonable. I looked it up. It's, it's, a, it's about a, it's about a $5,500, $5,800 car, but uh, the car is in good shape. Yeah, I wonder if you walked up to somebody like that with four grand cash and said, I got well, four sure. grand right here. Well, at twelve. Sure it would have taken 3500
You, so, th you think he would have? I, uh, absolutely. I, 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 mean, I don't know the guy or anything, but I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, in the excitement, you know, it's, it's only, I think he had it down to 4,000. I, I thought I saw 4,750 crossed out, and he had it down to 4,000. And I told my wife, I said, geez, you know, I would almost give him, I'd almost give him 3,500 bucks. If he could take $3,500 for it, I'd, I'd probably buy it. But I, you know, I don't have, I just had a baby, so I don't have that kind of money right now. But, but uh, hey, I wanted to, I wanted to ask, is it, is it okay to give myself a plug? Yourself a plug? Yeah, on, on, something, on something new that I sell. I didn't hear it. Go, right, I, go ahead. I didn't hear it. Oh, okay. Well, what, I now sell generators. Honda generators also along with Honda automobiles. And I just, since we have this big blackout thing, I was thinking maybe if people wanted a good deal on a generator, they could give me a call. All right. Can I give my number out over the phone? If you want to. I mean, okay. It's, uh, you can call AJ at area code 216-406. 7001. I'll give you the best deal on a Honda generator. It'll, the smallest one to the biggest one. It'll power a house. i got to ask you, because I'm curious, uh, how much does something like that cost? Well, you can get a small 2,000-kilowatt uh, uh, one for about uh, seven or $800, and that'll, uh, you know, that'll run some small household appliances and, and some lights and stuff. You need something with 2,500 or 3,000 kilowatts to run a refrigerator. Uh, and some other lighting and stuff like that in your house. There's the but, key. Uh, yeah, because you want to run your fridge. That's the, that's the point in getting one. Right, and that unit door will probably cost you around fourteen hundred dollars. Okay. All right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's it's not it's not a bad it's not a bad deal, but it's, you know all the fire all the firehouses use Honda Honda generators. I mean, it's the best generator on the market. All right. So, uh, you got your plug in. I got to run. I appreciate it. All right. More than welcome. I mean, I had no idea. I don't, have, I don't have extra money laying around to go out and buy a generator. To me, if you think about it, in all reality, I mean, if I had to spend that $1,400 pop, I don't have air conditioning in my house. All right, so what am I going to run? The, the refrigerator and the lights and the window fan and the ceiling fans? So $1,400, and I'm not telling you what to do or what not to do. You want to go out and buy a generator? Great. Uh, how many times does the power have to go out before you go through $1,400 worth of food? Now, that's what I would consider. I'd say, oh, gee, that's too bad. I had to throw out six weenies because there were two missing out of the pack and about a half a pound of bologna and some mayonnaise. And, you know, you know what, what was that? One, two, three, four, ten dollars worth of food? I didn't even throw out my lettuce. I figured, well, pff, it didn't go bad. What the hell else were we talking about? Oh, yeah, things to do in Cleveland. Is there anything to do in Cleveland late at night? Somebody called about the big egg, but they hung up. And what do you, you know, there ain't even places to go. Hardly, hardly there aren't even places to go to eat. I know somebody, they're opening a bar, and they're going to have food open to close. And I thought, you know, that comes in handy. I mean, I know there's one over at Pearl Brook Shopping Center. There's a 24-hour restaurant, that, and that's centrally located right between two bars. I'll bet you they do brisk business after 2.30. Go in there and get yourself some sloppy eggs and greasy bacon and try and cut the booze. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3's Eileen McShay. Tonight... Upper 50s for a low under clear skies. Tomorrow sunshine in upper 70s. Sun's just lovely. All we need now is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Currently 68 degrees in Cleveland. 68 degrees. You know, it's, uh, and I'm going to remind you again, you know, it's a good idea to keep it right here on the big one to see if you can win that key that might start that 2003 Ford F-150 crew cab, that super lariat job. It's valued at over $34,000, and we're giving away 111 keys in the Cleveland Ford WTAM tailgate party truck giveaway, and all you have to do is listen, keep it here. Then on September 12th, Wells and Coleman are going to have somebody try and start that truck. I'm going to line everybody up, 111 of you there, unless you got, can you imagine being the first one? Vroom. Well, you stick the key in, and you turn the key, and it starts the truck, or opens the door, I imagine, is what they'd probably do, right? Something like that. If the, if the key works in the lock, you win. The best-selling vehicle in the world for over 21 years, the Ford F-150, courtesy of Cleveland Ford and the Big One News Radio, WTAM 1100. Greg, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Gilly? All right. Uh, let's see. Miracle Whip, uh, Kelly Holcomb, uh, new defensive line, 
and no convention center. You know, it's funny that convention center, they're, they're I, I don't know. I mean, I've heard both sides of the story. There are people who have said, well, that's not a good area to build it where they want to build it. And then other people have said, well, look at the IX center sitting there doing nothing. And right. then it also ties into what is there to do in Cleveland? Well, yeah, there's nothing to do. They're putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, I mean, if they had a casino in the flats and a yeah. big hotel complex for people to stay in, now you build a convention center. But until we get Bob the Jellyfish Taft out of office... But, you know, who's against gambling and, oh, and, and King George V, George Voinovich, we get George V out of office. Yeah. These people are going to be, they're about, afraid to stand up to the lottery and Catholic churches and bingo. What about Lady Jane Campbell? You know, the only time you see her is when there's an emergency or for a photo op. I, a, mean, a I ribbon, haven't heard any ideas coming out of her office. A ribbon cutting. Well, you know, you the, know thing, the thing with Jane Campbell is somebody has to whisper well, the ideas in her ear before she can have any. Well, you know, the reason I call is I do have an idea. Okay. And I don't, I don't know, does that mean any... Uh, um, like, uh, does it, do they still generate power, or do they are they kind of like everybody else, and they they buy power and kind of distribute it around the? Uh, you're asking the wrong guy that question. Because I th- you know, I, I get that bad boy fired up again, and I would have it as a backup, emergency backup for the uh, pumping stations that pump the water, and also for you know different uh, buildings within the city. So in case there's a real emergency, like say in the dead of winter that, you know, we would be, you know, prepared. I, I don't hear any original ideas coming out of uh, Lady Jane's office or anybody. No, I, I really don't either. I hear that they're partnering with the gay community one week and then partnering with the black community the next week and then partnering with the schools the next <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah, doing a lot of partnering. Yeah, a lot of partnering hey, going on. Is she partnering with, uh, was it Barbara Bennett there? Uh, I don't know about that. Where's, where are the new school buildings? I, I think we passed that one tax, uh, and I don't see any new school buildings, have you? Well, we keep, pa- I mean, the, 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 the Ohio lottery has been around since 1974. No, I'm talking about that. I know, but I'm just, I, I'm just saying, look at the lottery. It's been around since 74. And I don't see it going to improve what it was supposed to do. Right. They shifted money around. They put it in a slush fund for a rainy day. And then you know what? When roofs and schools start collapsing and we have to get teachers right. from India, it's raining. Well, I, I tell you what, I smell another tax coming down the road with this, uh, this energy crisis or this uh, grid crisis. Oh, they just said it. they're going to have to raise the price of energy because well, they're going to have to fix the grid. Right. You know, or they, you know, they're going to have to go to the consumers, and that's just another you know, way of getting more money. You know, you just wait until this winter. They're even uh, East Ohio, Dominion East Ohio, even sent me with my bill. Careful, natural gas prices are going to be going through the roof. They're telling you that. They're warning. I'm on budget now. I can't afford to pay my gas bill. It's, it's, it's getting ridiculous. And, you know, any excuse in a book, you know, they're trying to pass another tax here or there. Instead of, you know, you, you know being a leader and doing things to, to control costs or see what there's, where there's waste, I don't hear anything. No, I don't hear a lot of, uh, you know, what's going to happen with Barbara Bird Bennett is. Oh, you know, that's a, that's, that's a joke. She's getting, what, $375,000 a year? And, I, again, I haven't seen one school building built, and they passed that tax over, what, a year ago or, or a year and a half ago? Well, Where she, are the new school buildings? Where are the new books? She's going to hang around for a while and ca- oh. cash her check, and then she's going to say, right. it's time to pass the baton and move on. But, Gilly, why isn't anybody calling her on the carpet? Why aren't these news stations? Carl Monday, the guy that's uh, the big investigative reporter in this town, and nothing, nobody's approached her. Is it that politically... Are they that shielded like that, or what? If Carl Monday were on your porch, would you push down Carl Monday or wait until later in the week? <laughs> <laughs> He's been around forever. I saw him at a Forest City Auto Parts store in North right. Olmsted once buying stop leak for his radiator. Don't they pay him enough money to get a new radiator put in his car? Right. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's Cleveland. I know. I, and, you know, it's, like I said, they, they're, they're great at putting the car before the horse. They want another tax for this darn convention center. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be another, what, three, four, five years before that gets built? I want to ask you this. Yeah. What do we do with the convention center that we have now, other than car shows once in a while? I mean, you know, if, if you got something big going on, it's at the IX Center. Right, right. You know, it, and I, I've been saying this here, you got too much development going out to the, to the country, you know, and then they, they develop that and then there's no more country. There's a lot of uh, places in the city, and you just mentioned one, though, it could be redevelopment. You could, you know, you try to draw corporations in, you, you know, you, you give them uh, some tax incentives. You know, it, you know, that whole area could be redeveloped. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I mean, uh, corporations, that's prime land. Let me tell you something interesting and get myself in trouble. Okay. Somebody told me that the Valley View Projects in Tremont, the land it sits on, is owned by Dick Jacobs. How'd that happen? Well, you know, the politics. 
you know, plain and simple. Yeah, well, I don't even know if it's true that that's what I heard. I heard a rumor, and I thought, wait a minute, aren't the projects somehow government subsidized? Or you know, wouldn't you think right. that the county owns the land, or the city uh, owns the land, or is that land for sale? I mean, could I go in there and say, hey, I've got a ton of money here. I want to buy public land. You know, what what I'd be interested in too, Gilly. You know, you talk about money and, and politics and, and power. You know, in Garfield Heights here, we had a rolling blackouts. I don't know if you experienced that in your area. Luckily not. Well, you know, I wonder how many uh, people in the Pepper Pike area and uh, those areas experienced the rolling blackouts. Why my power was on at 5.40 in the morning and oh. other people had to wait until 11 o'clock. Yeah, ours was on around, you know, 6, but then again, they, they had the rolling blackouts the whole day. Yeah, I was afraid that, you know, I, I thought about it, I come down here to work. And I was, th I was on Friday night, I come down here, and I thought, I'm afraid to get in the elevator. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to get caught, and you have one of those fire people come down and get you. Yeah, I know. Hey, Greg, I'll, I'll keep you apprised. It's a mean old world, isn't it? We got lots of things to try and fix around here besides the convention center, don't we? What about Ladybug Jane Campbell, the queen of the flying hubcap? Been on some of these roads around here? Let's get on the stick. Let's fix that stuff. I'm Rick Yomar, the complaining man's friend. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. Rick Gilmore. You poked the thing through or you didn't poke the thing through, okay? Pokey. On news radio, WTAM 1100. Yeah, pokey. Well, just checking the wire services. Looks like they think they might have another uh, serial sniper type type down in West Virginia. Somebody going around in Charleston picking people off at gas stations. If we don't have enough things to worry about, we're worried about whether we can even get gas. Wouldn't you think that a, a gas station would have a backup generator? I mean, I would think of some sort. I don't know. They were running some of the stoplights in North Olmsted. I don't know how they do that, but they pulled up a truck. They had a truck sitting there running. And the lights were slow, but they were at major intersections, and then they had some fire going on, and... Uh, it was quieter in Cleveland than it was in the suburbs. They had all kinds of action going on. Everybody in Cleveland, I think, just kind of stayed home. No, I didn't stay. I couldn't stay home. I had enough of that. Aaron, you're on the air. Rick. Yeah. How you doing? Great. Miracle Whip or Mayo? Neither. They're both really kind of gross. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that came up. I guess it came up because uh, Couch or Holcomb. Uh, at least you can. Uh, d Democrats or Republicans. At least you can tell the difference between Miracle Whip and Mayo. You can tell the difference between Holcomb and Couch. I guess we have to start saying Holcomb and Couch now, don't we, since Holcomb's starting? Well, we've seen quarterback by committee not work before, not only in Cleveland but in other places. Being a hockey fan, I've seen goalie by committee just kill teams in the playoffs, so I'm not even going to try that. But as far as Holcomb and Couch are concerned, this team changes faces, what, every three, four years? Yep. And we do it with uh, Cosar, and we do it with Testaverde. Yep. We're due for a change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well. I listen to I listen I listen to uh, I listen to guys on on uh, TAM here and, and other media outlets, which I won't mention. And everybody's saying mm -hmm. it should be Holcomb, but it will be Couch. No, it won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, it it just seemed to me that an awful lot of people are probably going to be eating crow and have egg on their face because they were saying for a long time that it's definitely going to be Couch. It's definitely well, they were wrong. They were wrong. And you know what? If you're wrong, admit it and move on. So what? Uh, you know, the pe people of Cleveland are forgiving. We'll forgive you. Exactly. You were looking for places to go at 4 o'clock in the morning to get some food. Now, when I first moved to Cleveland, I remember the big egg. Now, I don't remember the runny eggs. I don't remember the greasy bacon. I remember <laughs> the coffee that gave you gas. <laughs> the never-ending cup of 30-weight mud. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's one place. It's, it's a little bit further out of... Uh, you got gas from coffee? I got gas from the big eggs coffee. Yes, are you I did. Are you sure you weren't drinking draft beer before that? Um, you know, most of the time I didn't remember. It could have been just the tequila. Uh, well, yeah, that too. Um, there's I'll a place out on 117th called Diana's that's open 24 hours a day. Okay. Good oh, food, I great people. It's a little bit further out of downtown, but, you know, by the time you get out there, you shouldn't be driving anyway. Well, I know, like, in, uh, on the weekends, uh, there's some places, like in Tremont, you can go to Grumpy's, a little place that's open after the bars close. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. But uh, by and large, it seems like you have to travel quite a distance. I assume if you're, say you're a tourist and you're vacationing in Tremont for the weekend and then you're driving home to Brook Park, you could probably stop at Big Boy or something. There you go. I mean, there's there are places out there, but not as many as there should be. And mm -hmm. it, it reflects on the entire city. I mean, if you go to Chicago, you can do anything you want all the time, almost. Exactly. Um, they were saying before about the boil alert. Yeah. That um, if you never lost water pressure, then your water is fine. 
Well, I remember waking up uh, Friday morning at 6 a.m. not hearing anything about whether or not I should go to work, so I took a nice cold shower. Everything came out fine, so I knew my water was safe to drink over the weekend. Well, my buddy John that retired from the water department said the water is always fine. He says, what's two days going to make any difference anyway? And he says, you know, what are they going to do, purge all the lines and rechlorinate them? He exactly. Says, the, air, I mean, the, the water intake is, you know, you can see it way out there in the lake. It's not like it's right on shore. Mm -hmm. And you know what they don't tell you is... You go into these old homes in Cleveland. Now, a lot of newer homes, when you see the toilet, the drain goes down through the floor. Right. A lot of old homes in Cleveland, it goes out through the wall because right. it ties right into the storm source. Right. So you're pooping right into the storm sewers anyway. So uh, <laughs> there's always poop in Lake Erie. There's always poop in Lake Erie. And if your water's brown, he said, all of this is rust. Right. If you lost water for a while, he says, you know, there's crud in them there, pipes. He says, the only time that you really need to boil water is, he says, if there's a break in a pipe. Because if there's a break, then it gets dirt in there, and then you can get contamination. But he says, if the, unless there's a water main break, <laughs> drink the water. And he's drinking it. I says, well, it's one thing if you were sitting there drinking a beer and going nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah, sure, go ahead, drink the water. <laughs> I, I'm watching him drink it. And people would tell you. I mean, literally, the barmaid said to him, she says, I can't give you water. There's a boil alert. He goes, give me the water. She says, the water. give me the And then, you know, they're making, they're making drinks for people using ice cubes. Well, where'd that water come from? I mean, it's the that same. Was the, that was the bottled water. Yeah, did right. I hear, uh, did I hear uh, the queen of the hubcaps earlier say something about sewage backed up into the Cuyahoga River? Have you ever ridden on the Good Time 3 during a Friday night? Isn't that river already brown? How do you know? How can you tell? Well, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> you, you wouldn't catch me swimming in the Cuyahoga River. Exactly. I mean, it's brown, but that's mostly because it's shallow and it's mud, like Rocky River is. But when you, a lot of times, the Cuyahoga River, you look at it, and the water's just not doing anything. It's just sitting in one spot. It's not working. It's just idle. It, it's unemployed. It just sits around there and gets muddy and doesn't do anything. So. I, also, I also had a comment about Mama Jean Campbell here telling me how to do my laundry, but... Uh, you know, I'm going to save that for another episode. Last thing, you said uh, a couple of news breaks ago where um, someone had willed their money to their cat. Well, I said, don't do that. Give it, give it to me. Right. I, in my line of work, I get to uh, look in on a few divorce decrees and separation agreements. And I actually came across one where uh, the uh, husband had to give the wife cat support. No, oh, you're kidding. Me. No, I am not. There was also a schedule for cat visitation. Oh, boy. I mean, how bad does it have to get where the cat has become the child? You know what I would say? I'd say, ran over your cat, squashed him flat. What do you think about that? <laughs> and then you don't have to worry. And, and how, do, how does Cuyahoga County support, me, uh, support enforcement uh, uh, make sure that that happens? That's one of those that just kind of baffles you. you well, know? I guess they drag somebody in the court and say the poor cat's uh, not getting the chair of feed. The cat's used to this. The cat's accustomed to this. I need some money. Yeah, there's a standard of living that that cat has become accustomed to. Exactly. Crazy. Keep up the good work, Rick. All right, thanks. Mm. Yeah, well, Lady Jane Campbell, the queen of the flying hubcap and the queen of your laundry, she did have a point there. I mean, if your water's coming out brown, you can drink it. She didn't tell you that. I'm telling you that. If you get sick, you're on your own. That's my opinion. That's what I was told by a guy who worked for the water department. But it makes sense if you got some nice white shirts. Duh. If the water's coming out brown, chances are your laundry's going to turn brown. Are we that dumb? Are we that dumb? I mean, would people try and sue the city of Cleveland because it, they... Look, you ruined my whites. Hey, dumbass, that's what bleach is for. I mean, how many people I know wash white dress shirts with, like, anything and everything. They just throw everything in the washing machine. I mean, I'm a guy, and I know enough to, I mean, you know, I, I've got some expensive white shirts. They were gifts and that kind of thing. And, you know, you got a $50, $60, $40 white shirt, dress shirt, wash them separate. You know, wash them separate from your, your new black jeans <laughs> or something. Gee, I thought this was common sense. I think some of these people, if they're that dumb, their mamas need a whooping. They didn't upbring them right. They didn't raise them right. You gotta, well, you know, that's, that's the job of the true parent, right? The good parent is to make sure that when their child grows up, that they know these things so they can function, so they can survive. Norm, talk to me. Hi, how are you doing? Great. Uh, I um, wanted to suggest uh, perhaps another uh, place uh, in Ohio City on um, Lorraine Road. Oh, I'm thinking it's a diner, Mel's, or what's the name of it? Uh, Nick's. Nick's, yeah. Yeah, and they're open Friday night 
and us and Saturday nights. Does Sarah, the, real good. does Sarah still work there? I don't know. I, I don't know her. Okay. And I was driving out to a gig yesterday in Sandusky, and I saw a Ridley motorcycle. A who? A, a Ridley. 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 It looks like a, a low-slung Harley. Okay. Dual gas tanks uh -huh. uh, um, you know, on, on either side. And I had never seen one before. And I also saw a powder blue uh, Continental convertible with the uh, suicide doors. So that would be a mid-60s. Oh, what a lovely one. Yeah, well, you know, they're nice. Uh, they're interesting vehicles because they're unibody, and you know anything unibody. If it rots, uh, you, you know they're trying to support that entire vehicle with with the, the understructure. Mm -hmm. So I'd imagine that there were some of those things that ended up in the boneyard, and you couldn't open the doors. Yeah. But because there's no roof support on a convertible, I mean, they'd, they'd, have, they'd have to be pretty hefty. I used to work on them things. They were pretty hefty. I wondered why at one point they would take a 5,000-pound car, a luxury car, and make it unibody. And then I noticed that when you drive an old Cadillac with 100,000 miles on it, it rattles. When you drive an old Lincoln with 100,000 miles with unibody, it don't rattle. Right. And, but it probably cost them so much money to build those cars, they finally said the hell with this and went back to body and frame. And... Yeah. All right. Well, I like this. And I also want to uh, and uh, want to uh, second uh, Diana's and Miracle Whip or Mayo. Uh, don't like either of them. Okay, all right, Jake. Thanks for checking in, Tiger. Well, how, you gotta have one or the other. That's two callers now. That, see, I like them both, so I'm gonna go buy both because I had to throw both out because of the blackout of 2003. See, now I didn't have any bacon. See, I'm afraid to go buy a bunch of stuff. I'm thinking, well, don't spend too much. Buy food sparingly. That way, in case we have another one. Is there any guarantee we're not going to have another one? I, I, how can they guarantee, you know, you know what I'm saying? If they say, no, don't worry about it, we're not going to have another one. Well, then why did we have the first one? If we could have had the first one, we could have a second one. Seems to me. And I don't really care what, what goes on in Toledo or Pennsylvania or New York City or Toronto. You see the mayor of Toronto on TV? What was his name? Mel Lansing or something like that? And he was bad-mouthing the U.S.? It's the U.S.'s fault. I don't know. Why don't we just blame Canada for everything? How about that? We, we, we like to blame other people. Why don't we do that? I, I blame Canada for the blackout. Ernie, you're on the air. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to know is why no one has come up with a suggestion of why New York, Connecticut... And New Jersey didn't stop this blackout as after it left Cleveland. No one has ever brought that up at all. I wonder why. So they can blame Cleveland. Exactly. Now, Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, Steeler country, supposedly was the one who stopped all this. All right. Now, originally, I had heard that it was the first that started in Niagara Falls on the Canadian side. Then they said it was started Wolverine country up in Michigan. And then they said it started, it started in uh, Michigan, then it came down to Ohio. Ohio was where the big fall had taken place. But yet, you know, you don't hear people saying, well, you know, this is, uh, this is ironic. How can all these uh, problems end up going all the way to the East Coast? Well, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know how they're all interconnected on the grid like that, that they can just keep going and going and going. And here's the latest Wire story. It says, the Midwest so-called traffic cop for electricity is being asked about his job to help prevent it. Uh, when transmission lines fail, the Midwest Independent Transmission System, or MITS, I guess, operator near Indianapolis is supposed to trigger automated systems and give orders to power wholesalers to keep the problem from spreading. The system did not work as intended last week. This is now the nonprofit industry group is taking a broad look to figure out why. So maybe the idea is that it's an Indianapolis problem. Well, I'll tell you what. If it, it, no matter where the problem is, I bet you this is one of those situations that the experts, all right, who are not politicians or who are not uh, executive vice presidents of Jim or so forth, they probably have been telling these big shots for the last 10 to 15 years that they need to upgrade their system. And these people who are the, the decision makers said, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, why fix it if it's not broken? And then you have a situation like this. And I think this is what may have uh, uh, happened here, is that they were told about this, but it never happened. And all of a sudden it happens, and now every, uh, the people in the uh, northeastern part of the United States are affected by it. 
Yeah, I think it's something we're going to have to look into, and I, I don't put it past the government to say, why don't we shut down the, some areas and see how well they do, see how the people function. Would that be beyond belief, to see how the people function? And then it's also a perfect opportunity for you to say, well, look, that was pretty inconvenient, wasn't it? We're going to have to redo the power grid some, and it's going to cost you more money. Am I the only one that's getting really, really tired of the daily, the daily onslaught, the daily grind of it's going to cost you more money? Every day we hear about it. It's going to be electricity is going to be more money. We need more taxes. We need to tax more things. We need a convention center that we're going to put that on the ballot. Natural gas costs more. Uh, mortgage rates are going back up. Uh, interest rates are going back up. Uh, it's just more and more and more and more. And when do we have to say enough is enough? Enough. We don't have an, we, we don't have the money. We just don't have the money. Where's the money coming from? I'll repeat it again. It's it's I the way I see it. We're becoming a country of the haves and the have-nots. I know people that live from paycheck to paycheck, myself included. And I don't live like a king. And there's a lot of people out there that just, where, where's the money coming from? It gets frustrating. No, no wonder that you get people out there occasionally jump off buildings or something. I don't think I'd jump off a building. I think I'd go bankrupt. I see bankruptcy in my future. I'm not going to jump off a building because of it. I suppose if you're in deep enough and you don't have any friends, I mean, I could end up living in Carmen Angelo's basement if I had to. He already made the offer. But maybe there's people out there that aren't, aren't in that situation. Be the 11th and 12th caller right now on the contest line at 578-1111. Win a four-pack of tickets to the Sunoco World Nationals at Norwalk Raceway Park. That's for Sunday, the 24th. The 11th and 12th callers right now to the contest line. Listen for your tribe fan factoring extra innings with Kevin Keane, would you? Listen to win Indians tickets the next morning on Wells and Coleman. Just know the tribe fan fact when Bill asks for it. There's some great seats still available for the Indians. 216, the phone number. 216-420-HITS. Your home of the Indians is us. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Your triple Doppler forecast from TV3's Eileen McShay. Tonight's clear overnight. I wonder if that guy's doing a little jig in his basement that he called and said every time he hears me do this, he's up off his chair and he's dancing around. If you're sitting still, get up off your chair right now and dance around. Tonight's clear, upper 50s for a low. Tamari, sunshine, upper 70s. Currently 68 degrees in Cleveland, 68. Everybody, up off your arse. Dance around in circles. All right, now the music's over. It's like a cakewalk. Or musical chairs or something like that. And so once the music stops... Back to your seat. Try not to overdo it. Chris, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. How you doing? All right. You know, um, not to change your subject here too much with the, the blackout, and I agree with you. I think it is all a big, uh, let's shut it down to charge more money. I mean, that kind of crap goes on all the time. With We could sit here all night and talk about that stuff. But, you know, we talk about casino gambling, and they want the convention center downtown. And without a ca casino, it doesn't make much sense to have a convention center. But here's the thing. Bob Taft. It's so dead set against gambling. I wanted to know, man, if maybe you could answer this question for me, then why the hell did the Ohio taxpayers fund the bridge to West Virginia? If he's so dead set against Ohio citizens going in casinos and gambling in their own state, so why did we pay for that bridge? Well, I suppose the idea was to get to West Virginia, not just to go to West Virginia to gamble. Well, You want to hear an interesting story about West Virginia and gambling? I, uh, I have relatives down there in Wheeling and surrounding areas, and the uh, it had come up. I'm not, I'm not certain if I heard it down there or up here, but somebody had mentioned, they said, yeah, you know, they were going to make a, a casino in downtown Wheeling. Right. Now, Wheeling's not that big. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, uh, what about the other stuff? They said, what other stuff? Yeah. They're just going to buy, they were going to try and buy downtown Wheeling and make the entire downtown because they said they didn't care how much they had to spend for the property. They would always, always make it back with gambling. Always. Well, that's, what, that's what I mean about the bridge thing. It's not like they were... The Taft said, let's build a bridge so everybody can go down and hike and go whitewater rafting. I mean, come on. Who's he kidding? You know, and I'm a, you know, you know me, Rick. I'm a conservative all the way. But the hell with these people on the right and this church people. Who cares what the church says, for one thing? And, and these people that don't want to bring casinos in, in the Cleveland to revive the city and the state, you know. Let me ask you this. Do you think that uh, steel mills are coming back, Jane? Uh, the, what, what, what is Cleveland going to do? I mean, I'm, I'm not crazy about the idea of turning downtown Cleveland into a little mini Atlantic City or St. Louis. I'm not crazy about that, but 
What other alternatives do they have? Well, Jane will tell you a biomedical, that sort of thing. Boy, uh, biomedical my ass. I know. I mean, what, well, how is that going to bring in somebody to, you know what I mean? How is that going to bring in tourists to spend money to make, you know, we spend all that money, Rick. They spent all that money with the new stadiums, and I'm a huge sports fan. I love the new stadiums. But nobody's coming down there now. And, and, and we all know that the state of Ohio is leading the, the nation in males ages 20 to 35 leaving the state for other work. Yes. I, mean, it's, I, I lived in Vegas for a while, Rick, and, and it's, not, it's not what everybody says, you know, where people are running into the casinos and throwing their kids' college funds down the toilet and they're, they're not eating it. That kind of crap... That's a bunch of overrated junk. And the, the thing about gambling is, as we sit here in Ohio, if I want to gamble, I can go play lottery, I can go play bingo, I can go to a bookmaker, I'll, I can go play shoot craps down the, in the hood. I mean, I can find ways to gamble if I want to gamble. So why not bring in a casino to revive the downtown and to keep things from, you know, going belly up? I just don't understand it. I, I just... Yep, you're preaching to the choir because... I don't get it. I just don't get it. Neither do I. I let, let's look at Cleveland this way. We are a, a, a large, diverse group of ethnic people. Uh, there's a lot of people that came here, their ancestors came here and settled to work in the steel mills. People came up here from down south to work in the, in the auto plants and, right. and that sort of thing. And we've got this Betty Babushka and her pickled egg with the Rust Belt mentality that keeps pulling the lever for the same old politicians over and over and over because he's a good boy from the neighborhood. Yeah. That's not doing us any good. I'm, we're not better off than we were before. I look at the flats. The flats is a vast wasteland for the most part. Uh, yeah, like you said, why would anybody want to come to Cleveland we, we need to have a reason for people to want to right. come here before we have a convention center because them, them people that go to them conventions, they want to have fun. Yeah. They want to go to New Orleans. You look at downtown, you look at the lakefront, I mean, you're talking, you could develop that into another Baltimore or, or you know, their, like their harbor there. Or, or a mini Navy pier like Chicago. There's just so much that could be done and it just sits there. And, uh, yep. you know, we have a race there once a year at the stupid airport. I just... Think about this. insane, Rick, because I love the city of Cleveland and I'm proud of it. Even though I'm, I'm a native Sandusky person, but I mean, that's like, I consider that, you know, my, my second home. And, and it's just, to I'm, see what's going on in the city. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you remember Captain Franks? No. Captain Franks sat on the Ninth Street Pier. Now, we've got all this real estate on the lake. Name me a restaurant in Cleveland that you can sit and look out over the water. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Pier W. I can think of. Pier W on the Gold Coast, and that's in Lakewood. Well, I even, you know, here in Sandusky, we even have a little restaurant on the lake where, you know, it's a little Damon's, but, I mean, we, we, have, we have taken advantage of our All right. view of the Sandusky Bay, but Cleveland can't... Maybe you can help me out. <laughs> I went to a restaurant once in Vermilion that looked out over the, some sort of river and over onto a Pillsbury plant. You know what I'm talking about? That, was, it like a, was it like a little uh, seafood restaurant? Yeah. Uh, it's right off of Main Street there in Vermilion, uh, which is Route 6, I think. Okay, um, all right. I don't know the name of it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and at least you can... I, I got to run. I appreciate you checking all right, in. Rick. All right, yeah, at least you can sit and look out over water. It's nice. We ought to have something like that in Cleveland. I think there'd be reservations out the Yang Yang. People couldn't wait to go there, right? Want to go out on a date and sit and look out over the lake. I live on the lake. Drop in sometime. You know, one of those things. I'm Rick Kilmore, the swimming, swimming man's friend. <laughs> <laughs> Jump out the window. Yeah, take a, take a dip in the lake. But wait for the poop to go away first. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. 100, 100. Listeners, listener discretion is advised. Yeah, it's past 11 o'clock. Open phones this hour. Put your kids to bed. 5 7 8, 11, 100 in the classic 216 area code. Toll free, 888 wtam uh, Couch or Holcomb. What did you do during the blackout? Anything on your mind? Taking a poll, Miracle Whip or Mayo? I had to throw out both of them. Because they sat around and got clammy. They got clammy. The Rick Gilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. Yeah. Where do you go in Cleveland after the bars close? Or what is it to do in Cleveland? You know, that commercial on TV with the guy saying, Cleveland, this town never sleeps. What Cleveland does he live in? Cleveland, Tennessee? Or I don't know. This town does sleep. But in the infinite wisdom, somebody decided that they did not need, did not need homicide detectives to work third shift. Who decided that? That was during the Boss White administration. As Ladybug Jane Campbell, the queen of the flying hubcap, has she fixed that problem yet? Are you a police officer? Do you know, is that still going on? We have no homicide detectives on duty in Cleveland overnights. They have to 
get a phone call, get in their car, drive to the station, get a detective car, drive out to the murder scene. Hopefully nobody's stepped around in all the blood and ruined all the evidence. And, and when do most of the murders take place, anyway? Overnight, probably, one would think, wouldn't you? Here's something interesting emailed to me at gilly at wtam.com. Think about this. You're driving along in your car on a wild, stormy night when you pass by a bus stop and you see three people waiting for the bus. An old lady who looks as if she's about to die, an old friend who once saved your life, and the perfect partner you've been dreaming about. Which one would you choose to offer a ride to, knowing that there would only be one passenger in your car? Think about uh, this before you continue. This is a moral, ethical dilemma that was once actually used as part of a job application you could pick up the old lady because she's going to die, and thus you should save her first, or you could take the old friend because he wants to save your life, and this would be the perfect chance to pay him back. However, you may never, never be able to find your perfect mate again. Now, you tell me, five, seven, eight, eleven hundred. Which one would it be? You can only pick up one, an old lady at a bus stop, and it looks like she's going to die, your old friend who once saved your life, or the perfect partner you've been dreaming about. And this was actually used... And you'll find the answer surprising. I will tell you a little later in the hour, unless someone calls and tells me. I also have four packs of tickets to give away to the Sunoco World Nationals at Norwalk Raceway Park. That's Sunday the 24th. If I'm doing my math correctly, that means that's next Sunday. So just be the 11th and 12th caller at 578-1111. That's our contest line. And we'll blow them out. I think that's the last two pair we had. We had six pair to give away. And so we'll blow them out and just be the 11th and 12th caller. You don't have to know anything or anything like that. You like to go to Norwalk and, and watch drag racing. I understand they've redone, redone the park out there. It's very nice. I even knew people that would rent that park out for the day. You get enough people together, you can rent it out. They have to have an ambulance there and all that. But then you can go out there and like, throw somebody a birthday party and have them drag race you know, all day long. It sounds like a fun thing to do, doesn't it? Walt, you're on the air. Hey, yeah, how you doing there, Mr. Gilmore? Just wonderful. Uh, you know, it's funny that you uh, said uh, a little bit ago about uh, the uh, blackout deal. You know, uh, it's funny. You said, how stupid are we? You know, they used to do stuff behind our back, but now it seems like they do it in our face and just have no respect for us anymore. Well, sure. The Council, the council on Foreign Relations used to hide behind their building. Now they're standing in front of their billboards. Exactly. You know, it's funny, though. With the blackout deal, uh, I want to mention some stuff about that real quick. It's funny that I heard that the IRS was told to go to backup power like at noon that day, and then four hours later we get the blackout. It's funny that Bush is on the West Coast. I mean, if you just come back from vacation, wouldn't you go to your office in Washington? Well, you know, you just happen to be out of the area where there's a blackout. And uh, <clears throat> at first, there was a lightning strike, but there was no, no, not a cloud in the sky over Niagara. Okay, then they go to the, uh, well, it's Cleveland's fault. And then earlier today, there were some guys talking about, well, you know, there was a tree that may have sagged into the lines, or the line sagged into the tree, so we're walking the lines looking for this tree, but if that happened, the tree got blown up, so we won't find it. So why are you out walking around for something that you're not going to find? I mean, this is just all another big hoax, like you said earlier, where we're ultimately going to wind up paying for this supposed grid uh, redevelopment or updating, and uh, I think we're all going to see it in our electric bills here shortly. It's uh, just another case of problem, reaction, solution. Let's create a problem, let's wait for the public to react, and then let's come up with a big solution, just like 911. Ah, perhaps the Hegelian dialectic at work again. You know, yeah, well, it's, it's just kind of strange, isn't it? I mean, you know, this always happens periodically, and it's funny that this happens at a time when there's... The only news that was in the news was Arnold, out on the left coast. Right. So that's no big deal. I mean, you know, let's get everybody off of Bush's back. And it's, it's funny, as long as we are at each other's throats about what the left is doing and what the right is doing, we won't be focusing on what the real problem is. And the real problem is this government, and it's been this way for a long time, is not in the hands of the people and doesn't have the best interest of the electorate, you know, and, and they're, at, their, at, their, at their interest. They're not doing what we need done, and we're all paying for it. But as long as we all are divided on, oh, God, you're a Democrat, or I'm a Republican, yep. and they're wrong, or yep. they're right, we're not going to get to the, the real base of the issue. Yep, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely correct. 
Just watch the press, the, or meet the press, and those Sunday pundit shows. And the Democrats are all blaming the Republicans for everything, and everybody sits around in their living room and throws popcorn at the screen and takes one side or the other. When I had to throw out my Miracle Whip and my mayonnaise, there's more difference between them than there is between the political parties. Everybody just wants to keep their job. They want the status quo. They want us to keep bickering and arguing about things. That keeps the populace down. That keeps us under their thumb. Nothing gets done. One thing that gets done, you have to pull your wallet out more often. Take your wallet out. It's, everything's going to cost more money. And the government's got to spend all kinds of money, and you know, we're worried about fixing the power in Iraq. The hell with them. I want to make sure our power stays on here. That's why I question the whole reason of us spending a billion dollars a day to go to Iraq to fix a problem that was not a, not a direct threat. That's why I wish to God Wesley Clark could run for... General Wesley Clark could run for president. There he was, a four-star decorated Vietnam veteran general who said, where was the imminent threat? The imminent threat was the billion dollars a day. Ask yourself that question. Would you have rather gone to Iraq or had a blackout and had the government say, we're going to spend a billion dollars a day to fix our power grid so that we can make, make certain that terrorists cannot get in there and that we won't have another blackout and you won't have to throw out your miracle whip and your mayo and your hot dogs and your baloney. No, I'd rather give my money to fix something in this country. Russell, you're on the air. Yeah, hello, Rick. Uh, I got two things. If you get a chance to pass Sysak Sign Company, I'm running a big billboard on Norm Ezzy. Well, this is Russell Sysak. Okay, yeah. yes. Welcome, yeah. welcome, yes. So I don't know if you ever... It's on Pearl and State. I don't know if you ever go by it. Uh, I, uh, I will go by and take a look. Is, yeah. it, is it just about Norm or are there other things on the Oh, way? no, strictly about Norm. Okay. And I think you'll like it because you're the only one that sort of supporting the guy or give him some, you know, a little bit of help. Nobody else is. But I want to talk about that convention center. Now, he's treated like a pariah by the media. Yeah, you're right. And here's a guy who's just a guy, like any other guy, mm -hmm. that wants to run for political office. Right. And never, nobody wants to talk to him. They think he's some kind of a crackpot. And you know what's funny about Norm? Mm -hmm. I put him on the program, and he tells me news stories that nobody else knows about until about two, three days later. I, I think he's got some pretty good info, and he's done it time after time after time after time. Now, what makes somebody like uh, Art McCoy... More of a viable person for the media to glom on to from black-on-black black crime than Norm Ezzy from We the People. You're right. I don't get it. I don't understand this. They, they just right. ignore him. No one wants to talk to him. They think he's a nut or something. You've got to listen to what he's got to say or go to his website. Go to www.stormandnorm.com with yeah. two ends in the middle. Or your, you know what I mean? Go well, maybe with uh, that billboard we got out there, it might help him. But maybe, maybe. In regards to that convention center, you know how we could get one and we could also reduce the sales tax by three-quarters of a percent? Okay, you know how we have the tax for the RTA? All you right. get 1%, okay? Now, whenever you ride RTA, you put a dollar and a half in, right? Okay. You know how much comes in from the Fed? 450 Is that so? Yeah, so it's $6 for everybody to ride that thing per person, okay? So that tax is going to be coming up pretty soon that we can get rid of it. Because I remember the tax and Tim, you know, the poverty pimp, he wanted to rescind it. Because he wanted something from the RTA, but he changed his mind. So what would happen is the RTA is not even vital. It makes no money. It's not worth it. But there's so much pork connected with it that, you know, that we get into this town. Okay? Right. But you could save. See, that quarter percent that that, that lion-ass Dago, what's his name, uh, Jimmy DeMora said? We'd have a quarter percent. we give the convention center, and we cut three quarters. And then we get rid of the RTA. Because you, know, you take that lady Jane, she would say, well, oh, how are the poor going to get around? I'm not worried about how the poor get around. But when something has to be subsidized to the tune of, you know, $4.50 to $1.50, there's something wrong there. You're absolutely right. Yeah, because if you look at those buses, now they say clean air buses. Yep. There's nobody in there. I know. You know. That's why they're running those community circulators, because they only have to have, say, six people an hour riding them to try and turn some sort of a profit, if there is some sort of a profit. Sounds to me like there's no profit unless there's pork. Yeah, because you know what they're going to do? You know the Brooklyn, the old Brooklyn station? Yeah. That's what they're turning that into. They call it, like, jitney service. They're going to downsize all those buses. I mean, for the amount of people I see, even on the community circulators, mm -hmm. they could have airport shuttle vans 
And that's all they need to move people around in Cleveland because they're, they're, those circulators, are, not even the circulators are full. No, <laughs> right. I see them in my neighborhood. They're great big lumbering things that yeah. take up too much space, and there's maybe four people on them. Right. But I want to see Jimmy Demore. Let him sell. Let's get rid of RTA. And this city does not need public transportation. You know, not at taxpayers' expense like it is. Well, you know what people say. The more you ride public transportation, the more intelligence you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Russell. Okay. Where's, where's that it. sign at again? That's at Pearl and State in Pearl, Old Brooklyn. Pearl and State. I'll make sure I drive by. Okay. I'll take a look. Okay. Is it going to be one of these that's going to cause a stink? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know you well enough to know that yeah. the answer to that it was a rhetorical question. Yeah, this, this is a, this is pretty good. Yeah, there's a couple couple writers from the PD, uh, Brett and and Fools. What's his name? Foolswood won't aren't going to be too happy about it. Ooh, so we may be hearing about this in the paper and stuff. I don't know. They don't like to give me publicity. Well, I do. They might. I do. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Russell Sysak, drive by his sign at Pearl and State and take a look. I don't even know what it is. Gilmore again. This guy's got a lot of intensity. His name is Gilly. That's it. Cheesy chili. Like a hot dog. Talk so silly. Not always. He's on the AM dial. Amplitude modulation. He looks a little like Steve Buscemi. I don't think so. His callers have all leaky belly. What? Rick Gilmore on News Radio WTAM 1100. He's on Saturday and Sunday night. No, just Sunday nights. Well, Gilly's on the air and you know everything's all right. Yeah, everything's okay. Thank you. Thank you just so much. Jake from Barkeyville, you're on the air. No, thank you, Rick. No, thank you, Jake. Uh, I'm up here in uh, Oil City, Pennsylvania, and uh, it was funny you guys were talking about the demo derby cars, and uh, but four, maybe six uh, trailers went by with the uh, demo derby cars on them, so there must be some big shindig going on up here, too. Hey, you know, let me see. I got There's some other shindig coming up that I got tickets to give away for. Uh, September 7th at Sharon Speedway in Youngstown, monster trucks are going to be there. See? Mon Olympics. Monster Jam. And we're good. I got four packs of tickets to give away. Uh, good board up, Edmund. Is our screener still around here somewhere? Is he coming back? Okay, well, I'll wait until he comes back to give away anything, because uh, otherwise it just gets busy, busy, busy. There's a lot of things to do around here. And you were probably calling about... Uh, I had mentioned earlier there's more difference between the Miracle Whip and the mayonnaise I had to throw out because of the blackout than there is between the Republicans and the Democrats. Now, my wife, uh, she is completely anti-Miracle Whip. And, I, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, it's kind of close, so I don't care, but she's just anti-Miracle Whip. Well, there's some things that I make that I have to use Miracle Whip in because that's the way the recipe says it, and that's that. I can't make macaroni salad with mayonnaise. It's too bland. I mean, I wouldn't want to see you deviate at all, Rick. Nope, so. nope, don't want to change. I'm setting my ways just like an old fart. Sitting in front of a rocking chair and sitting in front of the TV and drooling and bitching about Roosevelt and one of those types. I, I think the Republican-Democrat right-left issue is kind of, uh, I guess, icing on the cake. Because we got America to be this uh, entertainment, sports-based society. At the end of the newscast, they say, well, a big hit at the box office this weekend was some dumbass movie. And then they spend three minutes telling you the sports scores, which neither of those things matter to, you know, the price of tea in China. So the people who weren't paying attention to that could pay attention to the Republican Democrat issue. And I still hear them today. It's amazing to me that uh, we have this issue that's an on issue. You, you have Phil Graham on the so called right, you know, the Republican, and he says we're discriminating against Mexican trucks if we don't want to let them in the country. We have Diane Feinstein, who she works for the people because she's a Democrat, yet. She makes all her money and buys her million-dollar houses in Aspen uh, from her husband having an import-export business and dealing with China. Hello? Is, it is, anybody, is anybody awake? 
it, it, it's just ridiculous to me that we, that we still have this. But I think that's that's what it is. Is we got rid of you know we uh, established this sports media complex that we have, and you know look at your look at your news talk station. You're the station with all the balls. It, it, it's ridiculous. The 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 newsstand, the newspaper. Holy Christ! They get a whole section of sports. They got uh, you know the regular news. They got food. They got living. They got homes. They got this, that, and the other. Oh, the TV. You can't forget the TV guide because that's really important. Um, well, I need the TV guide. I set my 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 soup bowl on it when I'm eating on the coffee table. You know, I was I took the family to the Steak and Shake. Are you familiar with that restaurant? Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah. Okay, I used to go there in Florida when I was a uh, teenager, and they didn't have the car hops, but what they did do was kind of like a cruising spot every Saturday night. But, anywho, I uh, took the wife and the kids there, and uh, there's a little girl, she's like five years old, and her mother sitting next to us and the little girl keeps telling her mother to hurry up because we have to get home because fear factor's on it's almost eight o'clock mom we get it. and i'm like this five-year-old kid is running her life by the television is something is something seriously wrong here well I, I, i've said that women watch soap operas so they know how to react when their husband cheats because <laughs> they don't have any clue as to how to do things in their own life without watching how... We got to see how people do it on the TV. Don't they just watch Sherry Springer now? Well, I was thinking about that. You know, it's, it's funny. Um, totally off the topic, but uh, you, you, you're you a regular listener to this program. You yes. uh, you remember the Jenny call, the old lady? Uh, you know what? Th th that freaking call almost makes me cry. Uh, you know, I... Played it last week at the end of the program for anybody that had not heard it, because I like to think of this program as a show like Jerry Springer. It ties in with Holcomb and Couch. If Couch is going to play, I'm not watching as often because it's not exciting, whereas when Holcomb would play, it made it at least exciting because I don't know what he's going to do next. Just like when you watch Springer, you don't know what he's going to do next, but when you watch Montel, you know what you're going to get. And people have said, I listen to your program, Rick, because I don't know what you're going to say next. Well, that's good, but... I play the Jenny call from like a year ago. People are calling Mike Trevisano's program, her post-Rush at three here on the big one, saying, we need to do something to help that Jenny woman that called Rick's show last night. We should send her flowers or bake her a cake or something. And I'm thinking, that call's over a year old. Uh, don't they know that? Well, I guess they're, not. They're, they're getting up to speed slowly but surely. And on here, Mike's calling me, asking me off the air. What's you know? Or I called him, and then he wanted to know what's going on with this Jenny person. I said that's a call from a long time ago. <laughs> but I guess you never know what you're going to hear. And and yeah, like I say, television is pretty invasive in people's lives, and, and I don't understand it. I mean, sometimes I have the TV on to watch the news, and that's about it. But I don't let television run my life. Well, and, and there you go. With, with the news, you, you have it on to watch news, and uh, I would hope that that would be basically um, the weather, uh, the traffic, if you're going to be able to get to work, if it's snowing or if it's, uh, you know, 900 degrees. But uh, the news, like you were talking about uh, Storm and Norm, you, you know, there's the news. Uh, you, you might even go so far. We're so inundated with the so-called news, it goes from the plain Jane nothing stories on the three big networks to the Fox, the CNN, the MSNBC, and then it goes all the way over to, uh, you know, the shortwave stuff that's becoming more mainstream, whether it's Alex Jones or some other nut job like that. And it's like, we're so even inundated by news, we don't know what the hell to pay attention to there. I don't know if I'd call Alex Jones mainstream. Well, I'm saying he's becoming more popular. All right. Well, I, I, think, definitely I, wouldn't. I think he's kind of a nut. He, he's not kind of a nut. He, he is a nut. He, he is a nut. Okay. All um, right. It's Rick. Yes. It's our fault. We have, no, we have no willpower. We just let everything happen. You know what? Uh, it's, that, that's too much of a mess to pay attention to politics. I'm going to watch the Browns game. Well, here's what it is. Most people think about the, the three words. What's for dinner? That's what they're concerned about. What's for dinner? They're not concerned about world politics. If I were sitting here talking about China right now, radios would be turning off all over the country. 
<laughs> no, nobody cares less about that, and, and thusly, there's no reason to bring it up because I am certainly quite popular with young men that listen to this program that has made it the most listened to program on this station on Sunday nights. Most, more people are listening to, to this program than anything else on the radio, and I'm just so pleased, and you've got to keep talking about stuff that people might find interesting. True. Men, and I, and I men listen to this show. Women hate me, I guess. I don't know. Well, I I'm never getting remarried. I'm going to find a woman who hates me and give her my house. <laughs> I do firmly believe you're popular with young men. Well, not young men, just men in general. Well, men listen to this, you know, I mean, we don't want, I don't, I, I don't need 80, I don't need 85 year old men listening to me. Do you, do you belong to the Anglican church? Uh, no. Okay, well, that kind of wipes away the young men. No, 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 not that kind of thing. Jeez, get, oh. your mind, get your mind out of the gutter, but while your mind's in the gutter, could you clean those leaves and stuff out of there? Because I haven't gotten a chance to get up on the roof yet. I'll get it, Rick. See ya. All right, bye-bye. Well, someone on the line says they know the answer to the riddle. You're, you're driving along in your car on a wild, stormy night, and you pass by a bus stop, and you see three people waiting there for the bus. An old lady who looks as if she's about to die. An old